Washington State Penitentiary, 1979. Inmate number 6288. As I said, he's the guy that kicked the whole thing off to begin with. My whole club knows who killed him, and they're sitting right by it. Surprise me to the fact that uh, a killing went down. I heard about the murder on the radio. Two brothers were charged. This case was primarily different because the victim was a guard. My whole life has been spent in various different types of institutions. The state came and took them, and it broke my mother's heart because she wanted her sister's children to be raised with hers. The first time he'd been in the hole, he was like nine years old, and he'd figured out how to survive like that. You know, I just worked my way through the system. They told me where they eat at. They called it the reservation. Indian brothers being around, singing. It was like being free. It was like we weren't even in that prison system. Indian prisoners in South Dakota, I believe, Sioux Falls, were getting a, a sweat lodge. I knew that whatever the situation was, he deserved to have as fair a trial as could be given him in our system. The nature of the prosecutors, the nature of the judge, it was difficult to be optimistic at the outset. There was a problem with the lawyer in Walla Walla who had been representing Jimmy, and they just did not want to have a lawyer in Walla Walla. The history of the area, so anti-Indian. On three successive occasions, these sweat lodges were torn down. We had all the odds were against us. I didn't have any money. I didn't know how to raise money. I wasn't a lawyer. You know, I was this kind of amateur political activist. $10,000 was an absolute minimal amount. She would have to raise that money within a week. My goal was to personalize Jimmy and George as much as possible so that people knew that they were human beings, that this could be their friend, their brother, their son, that this was happening to. When we got to trial, Jimmy announced that he wouldn't come to court if he was going to be shackled. We said to him, Jimmy, if you're not in the courtroom, we will lose. You will be found guilty of first-degree murder. I should like to inform the court once again that I will not attend my trial and be subjected to such degrading treatment. Making the River was about uh, being free. It really does start with the person who is on trial. There's integrity there, that there's honesty there. Then it filters down through everyone else working on the case. When that happens, it doesn't happen unless you have Jimmy Simmons.